Hey, namaste, I'm Kay, this is Ecstatic Self, and I am really actually very excited for today's video and the next couple days video because I'm gonna share with you something very special to me uh, that I haven't really talked about before. So I'm gonna take you back in time to the year 2015, five years ago, actually 2014, six years ago. And I had just finished a tour of, a summer tour of a two Shakespeare plays and I was wanting to do something very meaningful for myself. I had, I had really struggled that summer um, being on tour and wanted to create a big project that I would love to act in and to, to produce. Uh, because I realized that when I was fully just being an actor, I, I was reliant on other people to tell me what I could do, what I could create, how I could make art. And I thought that was bullshit. It's time for me to do something on my own. So. 2014, end of summer, I started writing the script for a 35-minute movie called what ended up being called Legend of Amba. And I spent the next eight months producing it. Uh, cast actors that I had worked with in Chicago, got uh, some friends who did film production to help develop it. And the reason that I'm telling you about this is five years ago, there's the five years, I, the film premiered at the Utopia Film Festival uh, near Washington, D.C., actually, where I live now. And it was the first time it got seen by an audience. So five years ago, just about now. And I thought it would be interesting to kind of revisit this film because a lot has happened in my life in those subsequent five years. And I thought it would be interesting to, one, share the film with you, but two, to talk a little bit about where it came from and why I made it. So we go back in time to when I'm writing this film and producing it. And I had been out openly gay for about two years. I had had my first boyfriend. I had fallen in love for the first time. I had had sex for the first time. I had had my heart broken about twice. I had dated other people, but I was still very much in the process of coming home to myself. I still felt very insecure as a human being, but I did realize that I had taken quite a few steps on my journey and that I was headed in the right direction. And I wanted to create a film about well, what would it be like if everybody had the opportunity to come home to themselves, everybody had the opportunity to come to know themselves better. And so I was like, what, what if what if there was this magical force that you encounter it and suddenly you are living your truest life? What would that be like? And so that was the seed that the film grew into. Now, the other thing going on at that time is I was thinking about some of my high school friends. We, at that point, were not in close friendship. Uh, we had had a little bit of a falling out. Um, I think we got much closer as film production ramped up and I had to tell them that I was making a film about them. Um, but several of my friends that I was in high school with, um, later in life, some before this movie was made, some after this movie was made, uh, identified as queer. Um, but, you know, at least one, possibly two, maybe a few, uh, were very, very closeted. And I thought, well, how fun for them if I basically wrote them in this film. I know I'm a horrible friend, right? I make art about people I actually know. What, what would it be like if I wrote them into this film and then gave them the same experience? They meet this magical creature and boom, they're living their truest life. Can I say presumptuous of me to think that I knew what was going on with them? Uh, but lo and behold, the one character that I made specifically gay in the film and came out after the magical event, he did end up coming out two years later, so... And when I showed him the film, he's like, that's very nice, but I'm not gay. I said, mm -hmm. all right, 30 year, 30 year old version. Okay, I believe you. Anyhow, tangential, don't need to go there. Lovely human being, one of my favorite human beings on the planet. I'm so glad he's out now and mazel tov, best wishes to him. Uh, so in this film, the way I thought I would represent these burgeoning self-awareness would be through some psychic awareness through one of the senses. So my character in the film, I believe, is able to hear other people's thoughts. He got the sense of sound, you know, supernatural sound. Another person in the film, I think it's the 
the, the, the closeted one, he gets supernatural sight. He can see what people really look like on the inside, which honestly would be a very useful skill on a first date. Like you, you could just switch your vision and see what they look like actually beneath the skin and judge them based on that. That would be really lovely, wouldn't it? Um, you can actually. I feel like you can. You can with work and meditation and, and soul searching. You, you can develop that skill. I do, I do believe. Uh, and then the other three. There's five of us. One gets touch. One gets taste. One gets smell. It was a good idea in concept. I'm not entirely sure how supernatural taste and supernatural smell is a very useful superpower. Like, I know things about you once I taste you, or I know things about you once I smell you. Um, seems a little bit like a nuisance. But anyhow, that's what I went with. Uh, so, obviously, since that time, I've continued to develop, I've continued to grow. I would say I'm, I'm quite a bit more humble now, now than I was then to make such such bold presumptions about people I went to school with and want to create a film directly about them. And gratefully, they were all very gracious about it and watched it and laughed and didn't harangue me, didn't harass me for doing that. Um, Looking back on that film now, I still think it is a really a, a lovely, beautiful piece of art. Um, I felt like, I feel like, you know, it's it's people who are doing the best they can, you know, it's not a great film, but it is charming. Uh, and I thought it would be interesting to, to share it with you on this YouTube channel. So in tomorrow's video, I'm going to just post a little introduction, and then I'm going to show you the whole 35 minute film. Uh, we shot it over the course of, I think, two weeks in Chicago and in Mexico, Puerto Vallarta. Uh, so it was definitely, for being a no budget film, we, we definitely had the locations. Uh, went to several film festivals, won a couple awards, uh, but it, you know, it was it was just a nice experience. I, at that time I had hoped that it would lead to other opportunities for me as an actor, and it didn't. Um, but I'm gonna talk more about that. I'm gonna talk more about why I left acting in a video later this week, in the next couple coming days, because I think it's a, a really interesting insight to how we mature, uh, and how we grow, and how we learn what we better need. So I'll be talking more about that. But this is something really valuable to me. I'm excited to share it with you. Uh, you know, as you watch this film tomorrow, if you watch it, I hope you do. Just remember, it's some twenty-something-year-old kids trying to do the best they can to make a movie. Uh, I was originally thinking it was going to be a feature film. My father insisted that I should not do it that way, so I cut it down to 35 minutes. Maybe a smart decision, maybe not. Uh, but I'm honored to share it with you. Please take, take a look tomorrow, let me know your thoughts, and I'm excited to hear how Legend of Amba resonates with you. Uh, more recent artistic work, I have my book coming out in November, please check it out. Uh, a Journey to the Ecstatic Self, available wherever fine books are sold, in hardcover and ebook for pre-sale paperback and audiobook once it launches in November. So thank you for being here with me. This is Ecstatic Self. Namaste.